You know, I've been an AI scientist for the last 25 years. You know, I just lived through AI summers and winters where AI worked and when AI didn't work for the society. I'm here, I'm running, I've started the AI center at Czech Technical University, which is a, a research institute out of a department of computer science. We are specialized in artificial intelligence. And we are known for being rather diverse center. You know that your AI is a number of things. You know, it's been not only super famous machine learning and deep learning, uh, which is like really successful these days, but also different aspects of robotics, being it a drone robotics or like ground robotics. We also do a automated planning and uh, symbolic artificial intelligence, but you know, we are also famous here for game theory. And you know, since the very start of the center, we are focused using on three application streams. Robotics, you know, we are Czechs, hence robots, robotics. Uh, we do cybersecurity, uh, Czech is like really, really known for cybersecurity research. And we also are very active in using AI for mobility. You know, at our center, we are passionate about applications. It's not only basic research, it's not only writing papers, but it's about moonshots. And this is, you know, this is the Czech approach to artificial intelligence, understanding the moonshots. And uh, for us, significant research is as such that is applied to some practical cases. So we work with big companies, right? So we have a, a collaboration with, uh, you know, like defense companies. We've been working with DBA systems. We got lots of funding from Google. We work with car companies like, like Škoda Auto. We have collaboration with Toyota here at Czech Technical University. But we also partner and collaborate like with more startups. So you see, know, we did some research lately with Liftango, like Czech, Czech kind of Eber company. So for us, working with small and big alike, no difference. We are passionate about the, for the AI result to be applicable and to have an impact to the society, to the citizens and to industry. We understood that machine learning is super interesting and has got the potential for cybersecurity. So we, we were putting together this a uh, skill in machine learning that has been traditionally like on a very high level out of the Czech Republic and uh, this technical experience with cybersecurity. So out of the some piloting of the ideas at the university being funded by the US Department of, of Defense, we oh. formed a small startup and we were converting all of the early adopters, right? So it was like a really interesting ride kind of to, to, to be disruptive and to try to change one particular conservative industry, cybersecurity. And uh, couple, after a couple of years, we got an interest from Cisco and then Cisco came and they acquired the whole company. And it was a nice example where uh, the foundational ideas out of a couple of researchers and PhD students have made it to like a huge corporation, which is currently the leader in cybersecurity worldwide. The best way how to support uh, cooperation between the industry and, and, and the university researchers and students is to provide them with the opportunity to work together, right? And there, the state can support towards de-risking because you know, doing innovation is a, is a, is a risky endeavor. And you know, if, if, the, if the government and a state funding can take over some of the uh, risks that uh, the researchers and the editors undertake, it'd be awesome. Uh, similarly, it's, it's great if, if industrial partners will take more responsibility for education. It's because you know, those are the guys that take the benefits out of this great education system that we have here in the Czech Republic. So I think it's, it's only fair if the big companies uh, contribute. And you know, me as a university professor, I've got great experience with those big Czech software vendors like Red Hat, who is uh, paying and funding for the chair of uh, software engineering at my department. Or, or Avast, they, are, they were generous enough to fund the uh, chair in cybersecurity. So this is the, those are the examples how industry understands uh, their, co their responsibility in education and they chip, chip in, in, in the education system. Uh, in the Czech Republic, we have great universities that are kind of contributing to, to artificial intelligence. You know, I'll start with the uh, Czech Technical University, which is uh, really, really strong in AI, robotics, security, machine learning, computer vision, but also uh, Charles University, where, we, where they are like really, really strong in a natural language processing. 
besides, uh, we have like great researchers in, in Brno, like uh, Technical University and Masaryk University that contribute uh, in a great deal in fields like graphics or, comp uh, or cybersecurity. And we're also strong in Plzen. There is like st strong uh, talent pool in a speech processing. So from the from the technology perspective and the AI research, there are some of the like really fundamental unknown technological problems, such as explainability. Artificial intelligence, as it stands now, is either super high performance, like really capable, but nobody knows what, how, how and why. Thus, it's unexplainable. Or the AI algorithms are explained, but not, not as high, uh, high performance. And being able to bridge this gap to kind of build more explainability for artificial intelligence, this is one of the key challenges. And because human mankind kind of tends to compliance, so we will be regulating AI quite a bit in the future, the capability of AI to explain itself will be the kind of the key foundational block for even greater, greater adoption of artificial intelligence. And the second future in my mind is AI and security. Because you know, we, we continue to be more and more dependent on artificial intelligence. There are undoubtedly uh, issues leading to security. So we need to understand much better where AI will present uh, another set of weaker points for the society and do uh, more of foundational research to be able to protect it. One of the most impactful Czech scientists in artificial intelligence is Professor Jiří Matas, who is like one of the most cited uh, experts in computer vision. So he's one of those that really understand what it takes uh, for, a, for, a, for a computer to understand what is on the picture, what is on the image. He's working with uh, car industries quite heavily. So uh, on the other side of the spectrum, like young researcher who is like really interesting is William Lacy, together with two colleagues out of Charles University, one of the authors uh, who built the DeepStack program, which is the program that first uh, have beaten uh, the best uh, poker players. So it's like a nice piece of result, right? So AI will, will come and will change the way how we, how we live. So nothing will remain the same. And I actually think that the biggest disruption will be on the job market. The whole automation that AI is capable of and is providing to the human society will be eating, eating up our jobs. When I studied you know, at school, they, they told me that you know, I did my uh, studies in Edinburgh, like one of the best schools in AI at the time, 25 years ago. And they, they taught me that one of the things that we will never see is autonomous driving. And hence, here we are. Uh, Czech Republic is really uh, in, a, you know, in a great position to be a contributor because you know, we have great AI scientists and there is a uh, like solid AI base, especially in computer vision. And we have a car industry. And I actually think that the you know, Czech Republic can be one of the countries where autonomous driving uh, will, uh, will start changing the world. Startups uh, having been built out of the Czech Republic, uh, we have a major uh, IT corporations building their uh, centers in the Czech Republic. And we have even small startups, like famous small AI startups that are building their engineering centers out of the Czech Republic. Yeah, we have, we have uh, people who invest in AI in the Czech Republic. And you know, if, if they would feel that there is no future, they wouldn't have done so. In the Czech Republic, we've got uh, AVG Avast in Slovakia. We have Asset, like you know, one of the biggest AV companies in the world, very successful, that are not only solving a cybersecurity of the past, but also are forward looking. They try to understand what the cybersecurity will be in the next years. So we have Cisco. Cisco do have like famous a machine learning research center out of the Czech Republic. So they've got like the top notch brains that are doing a machine learning and cybersecurity uh, for the whole corporation, super successful. We've got now interesting branch of Oracle, uh, a API business after they have acquired this super successful uh, Czech startup uh, Apiary. So that's another nice example uh, of kind of things things happening out of the Czech Republic. So we also got in the virtual reality. Virtual reality in the Czech Republic is a successful field and lots of startups are being spun out in the direction. And I also have to mention uh, computer games. Czech Republic is a, is a paradise of computer game studios. So lots of successful business 
came out of computer gaming. You know, Czech Republic, uh, Prague, Brno is, has been a melting pot of talent for quite some time. Uh, the, big, the biggest advantage of the region actually is the fact that you know, Prague is very vibrant and livable city. We've got great universities, both in Prague and Brno and other capitals in the Czech Republic. And talents is actually returning to the Czech Republic. It's the only like significant place in Central and Eastern Europe where the talent, after having left to work in the US, UK, after some time they are coming back. So I would say this is the, one of the biggest advantages. Prague is a great place for scientists because there's lots of inspiration and you know, uh, the diversity of, of talent that, that kind of lives, studies, does business in Prague is really interesting. And also Prague is a small place. So if you want to build your startup, so go to a bar and speak to, speak to guys. You, you'll be sure that one of those guys is a robotist and the other one is doing nanoscience and something cool will come out of that. So uh, people were asking why Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley is a great place for living and they've got great schools. So why, why Czech Republic? Czech Republic is like really a livable place. People like to live here and we have great schools. We have great universities. So I think we have all what it takes to be an innovation hub. And I think that we are slowly becoming one.